All right, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, and fellow fish and accomplices, good morning and welcome back to fishing. So it is the last third of August right now, even more than the last third. Uh, we're getting pretty deep into summer. And yeah, we are on the South Shore uh, fishing New York City waters. And I don't know, this might be the last time I come to this particular spot in a little while. Uh, I know I was promising a Montauk trip last week and I had to defer it. That's hopefully gonna happen next week. So while I'm here in the meantime, I'd like to try to do some of the things that won't be as easy once I have to go back and work at school. So uh, we have dead low outgoing tide and I wanna use that outgoing to take me to some structure where I can fish for some porgies and other stuff uh, with some crabs. Typically I'd like to do some fluke fishing first, but really with the way the tides are going, this is my best bet if I wanna hit this particular spot. And I don't know the next time I'm gonna have everything line up just right to fish this area the way I want to fish it today. So we're going to start with just some bottom fishing with crabs, fish uh, the first part of the incoming, see how that goes. And after a while, we will switch over to fluke. Uh, at least that's the plan. I'm eating fish one way or another tonight, either whatever I catch today or some frozen stuff in the freezer. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And hopefully it turns out to be a good one for you. So please stay tuned. Fish and know what we're about to do. Get some fishing accomplished. All right, we're rolling up on our first spot and potentially our only spot, depending on how things go. So as promised, we are doing a little porgy exploration, though there is the option to get other things as well. But porgy is probably the most abundant thing we will encounter. Uh, we're gonna be fishing these half ounce bottom sweeper jigs. At least that's the goal. And we're gonna be, fish, be fishing with these shore crabs and I got a lot of them. I've got two whole containers of these, um, mainly because last time I was here, I ran out and the bite was still going. So hopefully it's just as hot as when I left it last time. This spot has a tendency to be very hit or miss. Sometimes it's lights out and sometimes it's nothing. It's a little cooler than last time I was here. Um, so we will see, but there should be something here at the very least, so. The appeal of the spot though is there's generally much less people here in the last couple porgy spots I've fished. So let's see what we can do and hopefully it'll be a good session for you. Trying to get a feel for what the current is doing. I didn't bring my anchor just because it could be really tricky here and I might not get it back with the way this structure is set up. But if the bite's good enough, we won't need it. One of the trickier things about this spot is there's no external stuff to hang on to, but let's see what we can do. There's definitely some life down there. Quite a bit of life down there. Look at that. Question is, what kind of life is that? There we go. That didn't take too long. It's a nice scup. Okay, he's a little smaller than I want to keep. That's a good one. That's a good fish. Come on. Come on. Don't be a tog. Don't be a tog. It's big porgy. Heck yeah. <laughs> That's a nice scup. That's what I'm talking about. Jumbo, you are gonna be a porky patty tonight, I tell you what. Oof. That's a nice fish. Let's get a look. A little over 15, about 15 and a half. Perfect. Three of those, we're in business. Just got our first good porky in the boat bleeding them out very briefly just because there is always the op there is always the possibility that sharks could be around in this spot uh water has cooled a bit it's only 70 degrees so that's i guess somewhat reassuring but uh yeah i don't want to push my luck there was a shark attack not too far from this area so yeah let's see what else we can get Nice one. 
another big porgy. Jeez. Big porgy. That's number two. Three would be the minimum. It's not quite as big as the last one, but a very nice fish. Let's see, it's probably like 13 inches. 14 and a half. Not shabby. Add him to the stringer. We just got our second nice porgy on the stringer. If we get a third keeper, we'll keep it. And then after that, we're not keeping anything unless it's 16 plus or mortally hooked, porgy wise. We'll keep other fish. Let's see if we can get some more. This is fun. Big head. That might be a talk. It's a, it's a porgy, it's a giant. It's a porgy. <laughs> Big porgy. Jeez. Jeez. Look at that scop. <laughs> Hooked him kind of funny, but still, nice fish. All right, that's our third scop. That's all we're keeping, unless we get a, a true, true giant. It's like a 15 incher, maybe 14 and a half, 15. Not bad. Our third good porgy. It's our porgy patty limit. Let's see what we can do now. I'll keep fish other than porgies, like a nice trigger fish or fluke jumps on. Um, there's some other stuff I'd keep too. I'm already getting bit cheese. Uh, but right now, unless they're 16, 16 or above, I'm not keeping. Nice porgy, but he's going back. It's a keeper, but this is like small compared to what I want to get. Don't need to take any more than we need. I'm happy uh, I made the, the trek out here because the bite is really good. Uh, and as I like to say, you work hard, you play hard. And you know where you used to play hard? Recess, when you were a kid. And that just happens to be the name of the brand of seltzer that we are having today. I have never had this before. Uh, hemp and ab adaptogen? Sure, why not? Uh, infused sparkling water, calm, cool, collected, they say. Well, I'm a calm guy. Hopefully this isn't too depressing for you, if you know what I mean. Uh, peach ginger. I have never tried this before. Smell peach. Smells peachy. Oh, that's nice. I like that. This is definitely a pricier can. Uh, I didn't buy a six pack. I just bought the one. Bought a whole bunch of weird seltzers when I went to the city last time. So, yeah, I like this. This is like a solid... 8.8 .8. uh and yeah hopefully this video is going to be great so while you're here if you can hit that like and subscribe if you haven't done so already would mean the world to me let's keep going if we can defy the odds usually it seems like the second i do a seltzer review is when the bite just completely dies so not to jinx it but let's let's hope that's not the case right now let's hope the best is yet to come Another nice scup. Dark one. He's nice, but he's not 16, so he's going back. Pretty fish, though. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> They're all good ones. We're looking for a great one. That's like a 14 and a half, maybe touching 15. Certainly nice, but not quite as big as we're looking for. Let's not let that. Let's see. Just so y'all could see. Almost 14 and a half. Oh. 
got him. That's a fish. Nice porgy. Very nice porgy. It's probably a 15 incher. Yeah, 15. Wind picking up is definitely making it trickier to be as precise as I want to be. Again, I could have brought the anchor, but honestly, I just find it's more trouble than it's worth when I need to be as tight to the structure as I'm trying to be. So that's always good. Nice 14 incher. Oh, that's a good fish. Big porgy. Interesting colors in some of these fish. One thing I'm definitely noticing is these fish seem to be a lot more dialed in on smaller crabs than the larger ones I have. None of these crabs are particularly big, but if it's a larger size crab, um, they won't take it. They might nip at it unless I like cut it up into several pieces but they're very much into these smaller pieces, or smaller crabs, rather. I definitely think the fish like these smaller crabs better. The only thing is you have to have at least two of them on the hook. If it's just one, they won't even touch it, it seems. So two to three is the sweet spot for the really small crabs. Medium-sized ones can maybe stand on their own. Large ones need to be broken up. Just some observations. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Don't be a tog. It's a tog. Get out of there. Get out of there. Tug. Let's try moving out a little. Not getting as many porgies and these are small tog. That was fast. Alright, we're back on the porgies, that's good. Guys sure are strong for their size. So it's not even that big. It's a nice fish, but a lot bigger ones down there. That's something nice. It's a porgy for sure. Big porgy. It's fouled, that's why. Not that big. It's not a good fin. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> what is that? It's heavy. Weak fish. <laughs> Well, everything eats crabs. Kind of missed the hook, but sure. I don't want you. It's probably just barely legal, too. Just got a small weak fish, of all things. 
Might be the first one I've ever gotten crabs. It's one of the fun things about this kind of fishing is you can pretty much catch anything that's predatory out here, so be ready for anything. About time. <laughs> Works for me. See that? That was a shark. Little guy. One or two more tries. This bite really just kind of shut down. I think part of it's because I'm just not holding as well as I was before. Uh, we'll try one or two more areas and then we're gonna switch to fluke. All right, well, we gave that porgy bite everything we could and it was really hot for a while and then it just completely shut down. Uh, I have my own suspicions as to why that was. I mean, I think I had a bit more trouble holding bottom once that tie got moving. Additionally, it probably didn't help seeing those sharks and uh, that were moving around. Uh, there was a diver that was there in that area too. I don't think that was necessarily the reason. Uh, but with that out of the way, we're gonna try and do some bottom jigging, specifically see if there's any flukes still around. Uh, we're gonna try in the deeper side while it's fairly calm and tide's incoming, and then we're gonna start to work our way towards launch. Uh, I'm gonna try and just jig gulp, uh, no bucktail, but we'll see how things go. Let's get over there. It's a really nice day out, and it's a weekday, and this is a spot I don't think I'd ever fish during the peak season on a weekend if I didn't have to. But let's try this today. I'm not sure how fishable this tide's gonna be. Uh, still got a bit of incoming left. Throw the paddle shad down there. I think it's a three quarter ounce jig head. Let's see what we can do. Try and work 30 feet to start. Something. All right, well, right species, wrong size. Got our first fluke of the day. Try this area, I'm about 35 feet of water. I can push a little deeper and a little further. Plenty of bites, just nothing all that great yet. But we haven't been here long. That's a fluke. That's a fluke. Ooh. Where have you been all my life? Catching all these 20 to 22 inches. Gotta enjoy the finer things. That's better fish. That's a fluke. It still doesn't feel big, but it feels better. All right, well, a slight upgrade. Just one washcloth after, I can't even say it. Just one washcloth after another. There's gotta be some better ones. Keep pushing. Geez, they're all like cookie cutters. Not very encouraging. No problem finding these fish, just uh, these are not even close. Only dinky fluke so far, though at least uh, I guess it's nice to know there are fluke around. Try a little deeper. We were working uh, 20 to 30 feet, now we're in like 45 feet, thereabouts. And I do know there's some good structure over here too, so. Something small. Yep. Oh God. That was the worst possible scenario.
that's something a little better. That's definitely the biggest fluke of the day so far. It doesn't feel huge, as I like to say, but it's definitely not 12 inches. Might be worth a dip. I'm not gonna net him. I think he's close to legal. Might be a legal fish, but I'm not taking him home. Let's see. That's gotta be legal. No, he's not. He's close. About 18 and a quarter. Good sign though. We got our first close to keeper fluke, so that is encouraging. If there's an 18 and a quarter, there's definitely some better size fish in here. Just gotta push through. There isn't nearly as much of a drift as I thought there'd be. I thought there'd be a lot more current, but not so much. Um, so we're gonna drop down both in weight and we're gonna fish the jerk shad. Um, I think I'm going like 3 8 ounce right now, which is definitely flirting with like the bare minimum that I need to get by. But with the jerk shad, I think uh, I should be able to hold, both get down fast enough and hold bottom well enough. So let's give it a shot. So when I rolled up in this area, it was basically the last stages of incoming tide. Uh, and it was just going slower and slower as you'd expect as it approached peak. Um, and I found a few more small fluke, even with the downsize setup, or presentation rather. And as I worked into some structure, I even found some small sea bass, nothing even remotely approaching keeper size. Um, and even some other stuff. Uh, the bite definitely got a bit tricky, and as the tide basically approached slack, the wind started to pick up and in the wrong direction. So after a little while of this, I decided to move into one more area on my way back to launch. That's a sea bass. No, it's a bluefish. I'll add it to the list of fish today. Don't want any part of those teeth. All right, probably the one of the last two areas I'm gonna fish. I'm definitely going for it today. I don't know the next time I'm gonna wanna come down here, so let's leave no stone unturned. Uh, but yeah, tide is definitely starting to move out over here which could be good because it was pretty much slack wind against tide where we were. So this could be promising if there's any decent fish around here. Tide is peak going out too. So we got some good depth. Wasn't holding bottom very well with the three eighths ounce. So we switched to a three quarter ounce jig head. It's a bit more than I typically like to fish this spot, but I'm not holding bottom. There's no point. It's a waste of time. Unless I'm trying to jig up bluefish or something. So let's try the three quarters, see what we can do. Ooh. What's this? That's a fluke. All right, it's a little better. Not much, but better than all that 12 inch nonsense we were getting. It's like a 16, 17 incher. Six inch paddle, six inch paddle shod. Okay, let's try one more drift in this area. Then I got one more spot up my sleeve and then we're done. Uh, we'll do another drift, obviously, here if we get a decent fish or a couple decent fish or hits or whatever, but that aside, uh, we're on our way out. That's a fluke. Not a great one, but it's a fluke. Better than some of those ridiculous ones we were getting earlier. 
we're on them now. Nothing terribly big, but at least some action. <laughs> Come on, get out of here, you little rascal. I know I said that last drift will be on my last drift in this area, but it was a pretty good drift, so we're gonna do it again. And we're actually gonna do a longer drift and maybe break into two separate ones because that was two fish in pretty quick succession. So these are definitely better sized ones than the ones I was getting in the, the first fluking area I was going for. So this moving tide plus some slightly better size, I think it's worth uh, at least one more look, one more good look that is. That's a fluke. Biggest one for a while. Let's get a look at you. I don't think it's a keeper. Closest one since that first decent one. And 17 and a half. Much better. Oh no! Oh no! That was a good fish. Dang. Third time's a charm. Come on. This one doesn't feel so big. I don't think this is a fluke. Nope, it's not. dropped a nice fish and got a consolation sea robin okay so yeah as you can tell i got into a pretty good fluke bite um definitely better than the one that i was getting when the the tide was basically slack in that other area uh that other area was probably pretty good too but i was just in a position where i just couldn't fish for too much more time i would have loved to have stuck with this bite uh, but unfortunately knowing the trek that i'd have to go to get home I really didn't want to face any rush hour traffic uh, driving back. So I decided to fish this for like another 20 or 30 minutes. And I had some really good hits, a lot of short fluke. But uh, between not wanting to hit the traffic, my fish finder battery also died. So I decided just basically to wrap it up and just leave the fish biting. Not the easiest decision, but probably the right one to get home at a decent hour. Okay, so that's going to conclude a, a very nice day in the water. Just absolutely gorgeous conditions. Um, just wall-to-wall -wall action too for the most part with the only exception being like that tail end of the porgy fishing um, Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get that keeper fluke not that I would have necessarily kept one if I got it We we play it like we saw it But uh, I think the reason for that really is just because we spent so much time porgy fishing If we just fished the entire incoming for fluke, I'm pretty confident we could have gotten something over 18 and a half inches, but I figure if I am going to go to Montauk next week, that's all I'm going to be doing is really fluke fishing and sea bass jigging, so might as well go for the porgies to mix it up this week. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy there's still a lot of good fluke around, you know, I got some that were pretty close to keeper size, uh, and I definitely set the hook into some fish that felt a bit bigger, but they got off. Uh, but yeah, water surprisingly is in the low 70s, uh, water temps, so... You know, it's still perfectly reasonable temperatures to get on some good fluke action. So I guess get on them while you still can. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye from fishing.